Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we're creating a colorful butterfly entirely in Procreate. So what you see on screen is exactly what we're creating together. The color palette is free as always. Just tap on the link in the video description and you can download and install it. For this project, we're only using one brush and it's free. It's my mono weight brush. You can pick it up when you become a free Every Tuesday email subscriber and I'll leave a link in the video description to that as well. So I'm going to create a brand new New document that is 1500 pixels by 1500 pixels at 300 dpi and then we'll get started. All right I've got my canvas all ready to go and we'll start by setting our background color so just come to your layers tap on background color and choose the very first pink color right here and now we've got our background all good to go and the next thing we're going to do is set up our symmetry that way whatever we do on one side will be repeated on the other side and it'll make the process actually go really quickly. So in order to do that just hit the wrench over here tap on canvas, choose drawing guide, and then hit edit drawing guide. Down here, you're going to turn on symmetry. It should default to a vertical line. Let me make that a little darker so you can see it better. If you're not seeing a vertical line, just tap on options and make sure vertical is selected and assisted drawing is turned on. Once you have all that, hit done. And I've got my free mono weight brush selected. So now whatever I do over here is going to be repeated. We're going to start by using black. So just tap on the black down here. It's the fifth color on the second row. It kind of doesn't look like there's anything there, but there definitely is. And now we're going to freehand our butterfly. This is kind of an artistic interpretation of a butterfly. So this is not meant to be anatomically correct. It's going to be made up of shapes and beautiful colors. And we're even going to apply some shadow effects to make it look like it's lifting up from the screen. So we're going to draw our butterfly first, we'll color it, and then we'll apply our shadows last. We're going to start with the body of the butterfly. So I'm just going to come up and then taper down. And this is going to be kind of a skinny body. And that looks good. Let me make sure that these are touching up here. That way we can fill it. If you have any gaps at all, it won't fill it. And now I can fill it in. Down here, I want this to be a little pointier. That looks better. Okay, my size of my brush is 3%. So now I'm going to give it its antennas. Okay, for its wings, these top wings are going to come all the way up, curve in a little bit, and then come back up. All right, and then for the bottom wings, they're going to start over here, so the top wings are overlapping them. So it's gonna come down and then back up. All right, that looks good. Next, we're going to start drawing in all of our details. So this part is really up to you. You can freehand it, you can put in any types of shapes, geometric shapes, curvier shapes. I like doing these teardrop shapes a lot, but definitely feel free to draw any type of shapes that you would like to in your butterfly. This is supposed to be an artistic butterfly, so it's absolutely up to you how you wanna draw it and what kinds of shapes you wanna put in here. So for me, these are the shapes that I'm going to draw. So I'm going to start by making this kind of shape in here, make that teardrop that I talked about. It's a really good space filler for me. And then I'm also going to add in some circles, other teardrops. All right, and then just to add a little more detail into the center area, this part's gonna look a little bit more like a butterfly would look. And I'm going to change up the thicknesses of these lines too. So I'm going to make kind of these wing segments, just lines branching off of other lines. And then I'll make them a little thicker up at the top and then have them narrow as they meet the main kind of branch line. All right, now we're going to go into the bottom wings and I'm going to do another big teardrop shape here. I wanna make sure that my bottom wings look different than my top wings, that way they're not competing for attention. They look very obvious that they're different. So that's why I'm changing up the style a little bit, but I'm still using elements that are present in my top wings. And then I'm going to add in a few details into this big teardrop at the bottom. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is fill this top wing in with black in the large areas. That way I can create a lot of nice contrast between the top wings and the bottom wings. 
And now I'm going to just start color filling all of my different areas. So I've got my color palette all loaded in. Once again, there's a link to this color palette in the video description. I'm going to create my top wings to be primarily oranges and pinks, and then my bottom wings are going to be more complementary colors, my blues and my teals. So we'll start with the top wings first, and then we will add color into the bottom wings second. So I'll start with my darkest orange color. So I'm just going to start dropping color in, kind of spacing them apart a little bit and seeing how it feels. Okay, moving on to my orange, the fourth one down here. All right, and then all the leftover places are going to be the second pink right here. So it's a little bit darker than the background. All right, that looks good. Now we're going to come to the bottom wings. The bottom wings, I'm going to make this a light teal color right here. So it's the very first one in the top row. And then I'll just start filling in like before. So I'll start with my darkest blue color first. All right, and if you ever see any gaps like right here, I can see a few gaps where I want the color to fill and it didn't fill, all I have to do is reduce the size of my brush all the way down to 1% and just stamp in those areas. So just tap and you can fill it in pixel by pixel and then it'll be all filled in. Next color will be this darker teal color right here. All right, and then the light blue. Okay, and then kind of like where the eyes are right here, I'm going to use pink and orange for my palette in the upper wings just to tie the two wings together. So I'm going to grab my darker pink, so the second pink for the circle, and then I'm going to make the last part orange. So I'm going to take my butterfly and move it so it feels a little more centered on here. So I'm going to make sure uniform selected and magnetics is turned on, and then just drag this in a straight line to where it's a little more centered. So the next thing I want to do is add in some shading. So it looks like these bottom wings are behind my top wings. So in order to do that, I'm going to create a brand new layer. I'm going to grab my black and I'm going to keep my mono white brush selected and increase the size to like 6%. And I'm just going to draw out a little bit of shading right here. So it looks really messy and not like it, it belongs there. <laughs> but then I'm going to apply a Gaussian blur to it. So hit your magic wand up here, choose Gaussian blur, and then just drag it up. And I'm going to drag it to like 10%, I think. And I can knock it up a little bit. And then you can either use a layer mask or you can just use an eraser. This is going to be a pretty basic shadow. That's just how I'm going to leave it. So I can just grab my eraser and erase away the parts that are overlapping elements above it. I just wanna make sure I'm not getting any shading on my colorful areas, and that'll be fine because I don't need to make any other adjustments outside of this to add that shadow in. Okay, so once you have that, now we can add in some highlights. So I'm going to label this one shadows, create a brand new layer, label this one highlights. So now I'm going to grab white, so just double tap where the white is and you'll have white. And now I'm going to add some highlights right up here. You can just follow the same curve and then down here too because I want the bottom wings to look like they're lifting up a little bit. And now I can apply another Gaussian blur. This one I'm going to drag up to like, let's see, like six and a half percent. And then change the blend mode of this to overlay. And now, let me move it over here. If I turn this on and off, you'll be able to see the difference. Hopefully you can see it right in this area and down here when I turn it on and off. If you want it to be more obvious, just duplicate your layer. So if I slide this over and choose duplicate, it'll become much more vibrant. So you'll definitely see it right there interacting with the color that's underneath it. You can also do the same thing with your shadows. If you'd like them to be a little bit more dramatic, I do like them darker, but I'm going to scale this down to like 50%. So it's like a copy and a half instead of two full copies. So the last thing we're going to do is apply a warped shadow to the entire butterfly. That way it looks like it's lifting up from the background. So this part's really fun. All you wanna do is come to your butterfly layer, tap in the layer thumbnail and choose select. 
create a brand new layer where you're going to drag that layer underneath the butterfly because it's a shadow that's appearing underneath it. And then you're going to select black, so just grab your black again. Come back to this brand new layer, tap on the layer thumbnail and choose fill layer. And now if I turn off my butterfly layer, you can see we've got a butterfly layer that's just filled with black. So that's what we're going to use as our shadow. I'm going to turn my butterfly layer back on and with this shadow, I'm going to select it. I'm going to come down here and choose warp and I'm just going to warp this edge and this corner. So these ones look pretty similar right here. And that's exactly what I want. I don't want it too far from the wing and you're going to see why in just a minute, but I want it enough where it's starting to look like it's peeling up from the background. So once you have that, now we're going to reduce the opacity down to like, let's see, 50% and then duplicate this one. So this one's going to be shadow one. So slide it over and choose duplicate. And this bottom one, we're going to rename shadow two. Okay, so for shadow two, we're going to stretch it beyond shadow one. That way we have this double shadow that makes it even more believable that it's peeling up from the background. So select shadow two, make sure warp is still selected. And now you're just going to do the exact same thing you did before, but now it's going to be a little more extreme. So I like going an even amount, but further than it was before. So I'm looking very closely to make these match and that looks good. So now I can reduce the opacity of shadow two because this one's a longer shadow, it needs to be lighter. So we're gonna reduce this down to 20%. And the next thing we're going to do is apply a Gaussian blur to both of them. So we'll start with shadow two first. Hit your magic wand, choose Gaussian blur, drag it up to like, let's see, four and a half percent looks good. And then shadow one, we're not going to blur it as much. So magic wand, Gaussian blur, and this one's gonna come up to, let's see, like 3% I think looks good. Okay, I still think shadow one might be a little too dark. So let me bring this down to like 30% because we have shadow two underneath it, which is making it even darker. So I think that looks better. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is just get rid of the shadow around the antenna and this upper part because we only want it to look like it's lifting up down here so we can remove these shadows. You can either use your eraser tool or your layer mask. I'm going to use my layer mask for this one. So first I'm going to turn off shadow two, select shadow one and choose mask. Make sure black is selected. So double tap down here to get true black for this. If you are unfamiliar with layer masking, I'll leave a link to a tutorial on screen and in the video description. I'm still going to keep my mono weight brush, but I'm going to make it pretty large. And this way I can just hide these components of the shadow. I don't want any being up at the top. Okay, same thing with shadow two. So now I can turn off shadow one, turn on shadow two, select mask, and now just paint over these areas. Okay, now I can turn on shadow one. So everything is now turned on. I can turn off my vertical guidelines. So come to your wrench canvas and then just toggle off drawing guide. And there is our butterfly. So that's how to create a colorful butterfly entirely in Procreate. Once again, links to the free color palette and the free brush are right in the video description. So just tap in there and you can have access to both of those. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of new tutorials just like this one in the future. For more Procreate tutorials and freebies, head on over to my site, every-tuesday.com. You can also find me over on Instagram my handle is every Tuesday. If you try this out and post it there, I would love it if you tag me. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next week.